How to pay off debt. I was massively in debt and I'm gonna help you get out of debt. That's today's episode, let's dive into it. Here we are at our very first rental property. Hey everyone, I'm Clayton Morris, longtime real estate investor and best-selling author of How to Pay Off Your Mortgage in Five Years. I've helped thousands of people build passive income, invest in real estate, and get out of debt. Welcome to the channel. If you're new here, please subscribe. We help people build financial intelligence on this channel. This is the stuff you were not taught in high school. I'd like to say if you were taught that in high school, please tell me the name of your high school because I want everyone to go to that school. We were not taught how to build financial intelligence in school. So welcome. That's what this channel is all about. Now I've built financial freedom through buy and hold real estate, but I was massively in debt a number of years ago. It really was painful. And I remember, I mean, I, I think for many, many years I was paying for the interest on Chinese food that I bought when I was like just in college. Like I had run up my credit card debt so high that I was paying for things years later because I went massively into debt. So I've been there. And I'm gonna tell you how I got out of debt and how I turned everything around. So first of all, we need to establish what in the world is debt. You know, it really has a really deeply negative connotation, right? No, I don't wanna go into debt. I don't wanna go into debt. Number one, I have to tell you, as I've done in other videos, that the difference between rich people and poor people is that rich people understand that there's a difference between good debt and bad debt. Rich people, use other people's money, OPM, as we've talked about, to build wealth, okay? So there is a difference between good debt and bad debt. But we've been beat over the head with TV commercials and radio shows that we gotta get out of debt. We need to have zero debt. No, you don't. See, I was paying down my bad debt while I was building, I had good debt also. The good debt though was helping me get out of bad debt. All right, so what's the difference? Good debt can be mortgage mortgages, okay? I know, it's hard to believe, like I have often said, the house you live in is not an asset, right? If you have a house and you live in it, having a mortgage on that property is also a liability. That's not an asset. You can yell at me all you want, but I'm gonna win that argument. The house you live in is a liability. It's taking money out of your pocket, okay? So when you have mortgages though on investment properties that you don't live in and people are paying you rent as a performing asset, that is good debt. So mortgage debt, loan debt, right? Loan debt for your business. So maybe you run a small business. I think of my father-in-law who is a really, really smart entrepreneur and runs a huge landscaping company. Well, he borrowed money to kickstart his business and he regularly borrows money. He loves debt. He actually says that he wants to have, he likes to have about 40% uh, debt at all time because that means it enables him to grow as a company. So he likes to have a large amount of good debt in his business. It enables him to buy larger earth moving vehicles and backhoes and, and all sorts of things, trucks and, and diggers and all the things that he needs to run his business. He can't do that with just the cash flow. He needs to use good debt. But guess what? It helps increase his cash flow. It increases his business. That's good debt. Student loan debt. Where does Clayton come down on that? Student loan debt can actually be good debt. It can also be terrible debt. But it can be good debt if you know going into it that it's going to produce a certain amount of cash flow for you. So for instance, are you going to school to become a doctor? And you're going to carry a student loan that's going to be, you know, $500,000 in student loan debt. But you know that every year after you get out of medical school, you will make $350,000 per year. And you can pretty much pay that off pretty quickly. Okay. That is good debt because it's giving you an incredible skill as a doctor, a surgeon. Then you'll be able to go out into the world. However, if you're going to college, and you get student loan debt for, I know, I hate picking on art students because I love art, but if you're getting an art degree and you're never really gonna use it, you just, you're passionate about art, so you wanna go $150,000 in debt because you like art, okay. Now, what's the return on that investment? So that art degree, 
Are you going to be able to make $150,000 a year in order to pay that debt off? You have to think about this. So it can either be good debt or bad debt. But I like to think of student loans. Hopefully, if you're smart about it, and you're going to build and get a great skill as a dentist, a doctor, a lawyer, that you're going to make a lot of money in your life that is going to pay that debt back and you're getting a great skill. So that is good debt. Now, what is bad debt? Well, bad debt is, you know, credit card debt for no reason, for personal expenses. So you go, you remember those college tables that were set up in, you know, at college where they're trying to get you to get a credit card that has 22% interest? And as a college kid, I was excited to get my first credit card, you know, established credit. So then I've got bad debt now because I'm buying Chinese food at the student union or doing stupid stuff and buying CDs. So bad debt, of course, goes into that category of personal expenditures. Huge mistake. Car loans, another bad debt. Try to avoid car loans if you can. There's no reason unless you're using that vehicle for a business or a business purpose and you're itemizing deductions. But most people are just buying a fancy car and that's a huge liability. That's a huge debt. That is bad debt. I like to use the boat analogy as well. Again, bad debt personal personal crap that you don't need that you go into debt for is bad debt and that's where most people have their biggest problems that's where i had my biggest problems and i'm sure if you're watching this video you also have those same problems all right i want to talk about three ways now that we're going to pay down this debt three different steps okay number one is exactly what i did a number of years ago it's put it on paper put it down on paper and I know this is going to be really scary for you to look at your debt, but I want to help you with this. So I built a really powerful, powerful cheat sheet that I want to give to you for free. It's three pages, totally free. You can click the link below to download it or just go to our website, morrisinvest.com freedom. It's called our freedom number cheat sheet, and it will show you what your monthly expenses look like. It'll also show you how much in performing assets and cash flow you'll need in order to cover that debt, those expenses in your life. Part of this cheat sheet is understanding what our debt and expenses look like, okay? So we're gonna put this down on paper. And I wanna show you what this looks like by putting this down on paper. So let's just say on for just personal debt credit cards, we've got here, okay, $1,000, right? We've got $1,000 on this particular credit card. And then two, we've got uh, $3,000 on this one. And then over here, we've got $10,000 in student loans. And then down here, we've got $20,000 in another credit card with this interest rate, okay? So that, those are our numbers, it's kind of scary, right? But let's look at this and we're gonna come back to this in just a moment, but I want you to start to think about all of these expenses on paper and what this will look like. But what we want to do is we want to tackle, and I'm telling you this from the bottom of my heart, this is how it worked for me. And I know there's all sorts of different books and things out there that tell you to you know, go after the one that has the, the highest interest rate. I'm telling, you, I'm telling you from personal experience that this does not work. Here's what I did. I wanted to create a bit of a snowball effect. So I looked at this list and noticed the one that's $1,000, okay? That's the low hanging fruit. So I want you to go after the low hanging fruit debt. And we'll get to ways how we're gonna do this with some additional income in part two, step two and step three in a second. But I want you to target the lowest hanging fruit. So imagine being able to scratch off on that list $1,000, done, paid off. Now I've only got three debts left. I know they're large, larger, but it doesn't matter. Psychologically, we've now scratched those off. So what I did, I lived in Dayton, Ohio, and I was working on a morning TV show back then. And, uh, and I, was, I was like $75,000 in debt. And I made a grid. I got it all down on paper. And I made some graph paper myself. And I put, you know, Citibank card. I put this card. I put this card. I, put, I had like a Macy's credit card. I was like, how did I get that? You know, and I had a bunch of different, I had like 12 different debt things there, car loan, et cetera. And I put the month in the next grid, and then I just went down and I put how much was in there. And I just started targeting the one that was the lowest hanging fruit. I'm like, okay, this one's only 500 bucks. Let me go after that one. And so then that with, with laser-like vision, I went after that. I just started scratching them off, scratching them off, scratching them off. That's how we as human beings operate. 
because it's great to see them getting scratched off that list. It's like to-do lists. Don't you feel great when you're able to scratch items off your to-do list? I know I do. Think of debt in the same way, okay? Put it down on paper, use our cheat sheet, and go after the lowest hanging fruit first. Number two, step two is to increase your income. Well, how do I do that? I am, you know, I'm in debt and I work a nine to five job. Okay, well, something's gotta give, okay? You got into debt, you work this amount, you make this amount of money. Now, stop watching Netflix every night for four hours. When you get home, I want you to start to create a side hustle, something that you can bring some additional income into your life. We've talked about it here on the channel. Why don't you learn how to do some wholesaling for crying out loud? Watch our wholesaling video series. You could be making 30 to $50,000 a month just from wholesaling houses. That's how I was. I was able to start bringing in an additional 10, 20, 30, 40, $50,000 per month just flipping houses where I didn't have to use any of my own money. I was able to find great deals, flip them to a flipper that wanted to do spend nine months renovating the property and I would get paid $10,000 in between the deal with none of my own money in the deal. That's the power of wholesaling. That's just one way. Watch that video. We'll have a link below. You can start a website if you want. You could teach English from home. So let's say you get home at five o'clock at night from work. Maybe you've got kids or maybe you're single. I don't know. And you have some dinner, sit down, relax a little bit, do a little meditation, take a walk. And then from you know 7 to 10 p.m., you work online as an English teacher, teaching people who want to learn English virtually. You can make a killer amount of money, a few hundred dollars extra per day just by doing something like that. How could that transform your life? Where at the end of the month, you've made an additional four to $5,000 in cash? Now, don't spend that money. That is gonna be your side hustle to pay down debt. And then we're gonna start using that additional income to go after those low hanging fruit debts. So something's gotta give. If you're working nine to five and you're making a certain amount of money, you've got a certain amount of debt, it's never gonna change until you change. You've gotta build up an additional skill and go after things. You could even take an online course and spend some additional money to learn some things. I mean, look, you spend a few hundred bucks that could transform your life to create a skill that could change everything for you, do it. Maybe you could become a massage therapist, okay? I'm just throwing out ideas here, but look, you work a nine to five, there's a lot more hours in that day, and you also have a weekend. You got yourself into debt, you wanna change your life, you gotta do something about it, you gotta take action, okay? That's step two, increase your income. And step three in this process is I want you to use good debt to start buying performing assets. So buy performing assets. So you're paying down your debt. You're thinking, wait a minute, Clayton's telling me to go further into debt by using other people's money? Yes, I am. Because again, there's a difference between good debt and bad debt. So while I was getting out of debt, credit card debt and other things, I was going into good debt to buy performing assets like real estate. I bought my first two rental properties when I was still in debt. Those produced about $900 a month in cash flow each. That's $1,800 a month in cash flow from rental properties. There are all sorts of sources that you can use to find good debt. For instance, we have on our website at morrisinvest.com funding. We've partnered with the friends at Fund and Grow. Uh, and you'll save $500 off if you sign up. But those guys give you 0% interest credit cards that they will set up as a business for you and then enable you to buy performing assets. Or you have 0% interest, you could pay down that 20% interest over here as well and knock off some of those things. So you could start to play with some of that, good debt versus bad debt. Or you could get a loan, a mortgage, some sort of a good debt purchase of a performing asset that puts money in your pocket. So we want to start buying and building per monthly cash flow. Um, that's how you build financial freedom. Because look, I get the question all the time, should I just pay off my bad debt for the next 10 years of my life? And that should be my focus? No, it shouldn't. You want to use good debt to buy performing assets while you are paying down the bad debt. Okay, I want you to focus on increasing your income. And yes, using other people's money to buy assets. You cannot get rich with your own money. That's it. You can't do it. You cannot build true wealth with just your own money, especially if you're in debt and you're working a nine to five job. 
Okay, I've got an, entother, an entirely other video here that will teach you how to buy real estate with none of your own money. You can do it. You just have to take action. Okay, download our free cheat sheet. It's available, the link below, or you can go to morrisinvest.com slash freedom to download it. It's three pages, it could change your life. I wanna hear your success stories. Tell me how you are getting out of debt. Leave a comment below and please subscribe. We'll see you next time, everyone.